Welcome, this is where nerds come to learn things. If it's your first time here, click on the subscribe button and on the bell icon to get notifications about new videos. Thanks for watching, hope you enjoy it. So this is a little follow-up video on the Siglent SPD1168X power supply, which is from this series here, the 1000X series. What I wanted to do originally was actually cover the software for the unit and show how to install it and how to use it and that sort of stuff. So that's not something I normally do. I don't usually USB interface or um, network interface my equipment. I usually have them all standalone. It's just not something I use them. I just don't use them that way. So I wanted to show you this because I'm sure people will be interested in it. So this is Signal America website. This is where you get this the uh, firmware and software from for the devices. So this is obviously where you go here. Now when you click on the support and service page you get this one here scroll down a little bit you've got various options and firmware and software is the one you want you click on that and you'll bring up this window here which then brings up all the various devices although this is the current range it doesn't list the um, any formal ranges any formal equipment it's not shown directly on this page you can do a search for it and, and find it up here if you do a search up there you'll find your device if you've got an older device in my case I want power supplies, I'm actually, I'll just click on all models on this one, which brings up this page, firmware software downloads, and this is for the various ranges of power supplies I have, I'm wanting this down here. Okay, so firmware, release, and the easy power software, which is what we actually need to run to view the thing on a computer. Now the firmware I don't need to update, I've already got the current version, so um, I don't, there's no update since the last version update, so um, that was in July this year. So it was only a couple of months ago, but um, I say it's already up to date. So I just need to do the Easy Power software now. There was actually a bit of a glitch with the Easy Power software. Anyone that tried to get it before this date here would have just experienced a bit of an issue where the installer um, was in Chinese. <laughs> All right, installer still ran, but you had to be a bit careful about what you clicked on because you couldn't actually see what you were actually clicking on, and. Um, so they've corrected that now, so now the installer is in English. All right, so I've already installed it on this computer, so I'm actually going to go through the whole process, but I'll open up the installer and show you at least. So here's the Easy Power folder. Once you, once you download it, you get, a, you get a zip file, you know, like this. The zip file here, you'll get that. And then you um, compress that and you'll get this folder. And inside here is the install guide and the actual software. Now, before you install the software, you have to install some other software first. Let's open up the install guide which is in here all right so it's just a pdf it tells you the specs of what's required and they're pretty low specs you don't you know i think everyone should be able to meet these specs pretty much um systems you know <laughs> windows 7 stuff's all fine this is a windows 7 machine it actually works better than a windows 10 machine i've got so the windows 10 is crap i hate it anyway windows 7 is far better anyway so it goes right back to 2000 xp even all right um at least this readme does i don't know if the current system does but but you have to install this NI Visa, right? National Instruments Visa software, which you get from this website just here. All right, so you can see that there. That's where you have to go to go and get it. And um, you just download that. This is 5.4, it shows. I can't remember which version I installed. It might have been this one, it might have been a later one. I can't, can't remember. I know sometimes you have to install the exact version of, of something that's specified because the later version won't work. But I can't remember if that's the case on this one or not. And so you just go through the install on, on that program there. Once you've done that, then you can install the EasyPower software. Right, so it says to go to the website and download it. Well, obviously you have, because that's how you got the readme file in the first place. Well, you could have got this readme file somewhere else. It could have been on a CD as well, and that sort of stuff that comes with the um, unit. Always download the latest version, definitely. Um, so you've got the installer here. All right, so I'm going to go open the installer up. I'm not actually going to do the install, but I'll show you how it goes. So the previous one was a mistake, it's in Chinese, so yeah. <laughs> Alright, so you've got the basic install window, prompts you where you wants to put it, that sort of stuff. Alright. And um, it was create desktop shortcut stuff. I'm not going to go right through the process because I don't want to over install a, a second one over the top of one I've already got. Alright, so I just want to leave it as it is. So I'm not going to actually go through the whole process on the installer. But um, that's that part. So we'll go back to here. So it shows you the install process here, which I was just sort of opened up. 
and once it's finished it'll do that and you can actually choose whether or not you open it up whether it opens easy power up or not on launch or something then you can plug your power supply in and hopefully you don't have any issues with the um, USB driver now it can happen I did have problems with this myself if you don't do it in the right sequence and you try and plug the unit in first before you install the software your driver can get messed up and you have to go into the um, control panels and hardware configuration stuff and delete the port and try again all right so it might take a few guys if you mess it up you might have to go in and look at that stuff you have to search online for removing a USB port or something like that hardware settings or something like that hardware drivers remove driver or something like that would be like I can't remember what it's called now it's a little while ago I did it but anyway if it all goes to plan then it will install the device driver for you and it will just work okay then you can launch the easy power software all right so you plug it in before you launch, launch the software and you agree to be this window so I'll go in there now we're at the point where I can do that and let's launch it so this is the easy power window and you've got various functions across here which don't do a huge amount all right but the first thing you'll do here is this is a, a connection icon it's not the best icon but you know it, it's a connection icon so you choose which connection system you're using now we're using USB TMC because we're using a USB connection don't forget this is a generic software which Siglent uses for all their power supplies so it's um, it will just search to see what's on the, on the USB port and it's finding the power supply here all right so it's an SPD 1000X series so you open that and here we go now it shows channel 2 here that's because it's meant for other power supplies as well not just this one so you can ignore that because there's only a single channel supply in this case and you can see the output here this is the current set values and when it's turned on it shows you the current active or actual values all right so you turn it on like that there you go that's what it's actually doing right now okay and it's basically instant um, when I click on that it's you know within a fraction of a second it's switching all right it's really really fast so you can switch between four wires as well for the external sensing so it's internal sensing external sensing effectively and you also do the waveform viewing as well on here too although it's not particularly great resolution on the screen you can still see it as you can see all right so because there's nothing going on it's just going to sit there like that it's also the time functions as well where you want to do that which is set up in here so you can set the profile up in here for the time functions how you're going to control it All right. I think these are the settings I used last time when I was trialing this power supply so um, it's retained those settings okay um, it's also got this option use time on PC so look at that so there you go so using time on the PC so the PC is then controlling it instead which uh, gives you a lot more steps right so it could be really handy if you want to you know, increase what it's actually doing okay so get out here oh cancel doesn't work hmm found a bug signal cancel button doesn't work neither button works that's awesome okay so yeah there are some bugs in the software I just found another one all right so signal I hope you're watching this um, okay button doesn't close the window cancel button doesn't close the window X close the window you need to fix that okay the other thing on here is the voltage has changed oh it's because it's using the timer that's right so it must be stepping on that and I stopped it that's fine now down here is we set the voltages so you can remotely set it now the interesting thing is I found another bug on this and that's that these arrows don't actually work so you think you think you've got up and down arrows you don't then go in here change the setting to those digits all right well it doesn't work so it's a bit of a bug this you have to just type it in manually right so just if you want 10 volts or 11 volts just type it in and then click set and it will transfer it up here so scroll doesn't work arrows don't work you have to type it in so Siglent either need to remove these arrows or fix it <laughs> right. I think I should fix it personally rather than type it in having everything these up and down arrows is quite nice and maybe I should also tie it into the scroll wheel as well so you can scroll up and down to change values that would also be a nice feature um, but I mean the software works it's rather basic 
it has a few bugs in it, which obviously this video is going to be sent to Siglent and they'll get to see it and hopefully see what issues are coming up as well. Although really, to be honest, they should be finding these themselves. It shouldn't be someone reviewing it, which tells them what's wrong with their software. You know, you can get some obscure bugs, sure that happens, but these are basic bugs. You know, this should just work. You know, little things. This is little things, and this tells you about the software version. Yeah, this is the version of the software. It's just 1.1, one one, or was it 1.01.01.01.16? 1 Right, so yeah. Uh, functions, control and command control. That's just obviously those functions there, which is that connection thing there. Command control. We can actually send commands to it. Presets. Okay. Let's try that one. Yeah, well, go figure. <laughs> IDN. Right. No. Read. Oh, this doesn't seem to work probably either. Query? No. So, you think a preset one would work? You think if you did that, then queried it, you'd get legible text. So, it looks like this might be another bug here, too. So, hmm. I've used the software on um, other power supplies. The, it was SVD 3303X or something like that. And it worked okay. It did have a few little glitches in there, but it wasn't too bad. Um, but it seems on this particular power supply they're not as compatible as they were on the other one. So they need to look at this software on the SPD 1168X because it isn't working that well. Status bar. Yeah, right, it's all turned on. There's something here as well. It's got a status bar and it's got there's a 9 in there. So what's it actually saying? What is that? It doesn't actually mean anything. So you've got the status bar, and it doesn't tell you anything at all. Um, you can't drag things bigger. You can't, you know, make that bigger to see what it says. So you can't hover over it to see what it says. And have a little glitch that it's signaling to fix. So, yes, the software works for the power supply. It does the things you want. It actually adds some extra features to the power supply. I think you can do, um, yeah. You can do up firmware updates, updates through the software in here as well, but I prefer to probably just chuck it on a USB and shove it in the front of the part of the unit, actually, or in the back of the unit. I think I trust that a bit more. Yeah, so it's got some bugs, and but I have to say the software side of Siglent isn't anywhere near as polished generally. Right, there are some other bits of software I've used which have been really nice uh, from Siglent. But the power supply one seems to be very lacking. So much as the development team which do this one just aren't onto it as well, you know. Maybe they're trying to cover two older systems, so because it's based on older systems and that's causing problems. Maybe they need to do two versions, one for old systems and one for the new systems which can be less buggy and face it. Most people are gonna be using at least Windows seven. Very unlikely to be using Windows two thousand or XP. XP still around, but yeah, and here if you've got multiple devices connected, you can choose which one you're trying to control. Um, it's based on the serial number, so you can identify which one's which as well. And also in this case, in Chow 2 is not there. I mean, this is basically instant control. Oh, I've lost connection to it. I found another bug. So what caused that to get lost? Let's reconnect to it again. There we go, now it's working. So somehow it lost connection to the power supply. But this is very fast. It responds very quickly. These ones here, basically instant. All right. Um, and if I change this voltage to say um, 15 volts, for example, I'll set that. Yeah, as soon as I click the mouse, it's changed on the power supply. That is instant on the power supply. It's very fast communication, which is good. Visually, there's no difference. Um, here, it's pretty quick as well. I don't know if you can hear that relay clicking. It turns on and off. So, but the software needs a lot of work, I have to say. You know, it works, but it's not wonderful. Siglent need to improve this, I have to say. Um, but to me, it doesn't matter, because it's not a feature I actually use myself anyway. 
some people use a lot of software control which is obviously why you're watching this video if you're watching it you're probably be interested in using software control and there are certainly are benefits to it but um, it isn't something I do I'm not using a, a bench where I'm repeatedly doing the same test over and over again so um, you know, in that case you might want to use automation and stuff like that then this would be important to you but yeah anyway disconnect close it with this power supply as well I almost forgot to mention I actually like this power supply so much you would have seen the previous video all the testing I was doing on it I've decided to buy it so although it was on loan from Rob to actually test it out and do a video on it for review and pull it apart and do the teardown if you want it. If you haven't seen that, go back and watch the video. I'll put a link in on one of the um, end screens on the video, so watch right to the end and you'll see the end screen. And I'll stick some cards up as well, probably. I'll links in the description, possibly too. Um, so go and watch that video. So this unit was on loan from Rob from Tapaka Technologies. He sells these in New Zealand. I decided to buy it because I needed another power supply. I liked it, it seemed to perform really well, it was nice and quiet, it's got plenty of power, I like the interface on the front panel, that sort of stuff. So I bought it. If it's good enough for me to buy it, it can't be too bad, can it? Although that said, I do buy broken things, but that's to fix them. That's not quite the same thing. Second will be sent this video, so they'll get to see the bugs and stuff which I've seen, which you've seen, and um, hopefully they'll do something about it. I expect they will. They're pretty good on it. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. Good luck. Bye. Always give a thumbs up, but you can't see it.